Welcome to the Global Spirits Podcast, where we don't just talk, we turn every moment to gold. Welcome in, everyone. Always fun. Yeah. And today, we're going deep into the world of Damien Tremier. Mr. Golden Triple X, as he likes to be called. That's right, Mr. Golden Triple X. You might know him from his podcast. The Golden Experience Podcast. So we got his companies, we got Future Tech, and we even got a little sci-fi. Yeah, it's not every day that we get like a company plan A and D, a time travel story. Right. It's like we're really seeing how Damien thinks and how his imagination like fuels his business ideas. Yeah. So we have this detailed podcast script. It lays out all of Damien's plans for Golden Enterprises. And it also gives us a sneak peek of his novel Voyager, a time traveling odyssey. But the thing is, the material is already written like a podcast. Uh So we got to kind of figure out like what's the most important stuff for you. We got shape-shifting vehicles, wow. plant-based economies, a time-traveling realtor, and even a mysterious connection to the Gunankawi Temple in Bali. You ready? I am so ready. Buckle up. So where do we even start with someone like Damien? It seems like his early bad experiences with businesses really like pushed him. He doesn't just want to make another company. He wants to make a better way to do like everything. I know that's what really got me too. It's like he took all that frustration and turned it into fuel. For Golden Enterprises, he even calls it an ecosystem of ideas. Mm -hmm. And when you really look closer, it's not just a cool phrase. Right. It's about using AI and automation to make positive change, like Mm -hmm. to all kinds of industries. If he pulls this off, it could really change how we live and work. For sure. Okay. So let's break down this ecosystem. Golden Enterprises has three main parts. Golden Enterprises itself, Neo Innovation, and The Veg. Each one tackles a different piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it's like he's building a three-pronged approach to the future, covering creativity, technology, and sustainable living. Totally. So first, Golden Enterprises. It's supposed to be the launch pad to make ideas come to life, like turning ideas into real products and services. The script mentions lifestyle technology and, like, exclusive experiences. It's kind of vague, but I'm really curious to see how it all works out. What I think is interesting is it's not just about making products. It's about bringing together these creative people and giving them the resources to make things happen. It's like a collaborative environment where ideas can flourish. Oh, cool. Okay, now Neo Innovation. This is where it gets exciting. Shape-shifting vehicles, immersive virtual reality experiences, even like body and mind enhancements. Whoa. It feels like science fiction is becoming real. It really does. But if you think about it, these innovations are all about real problems like transportation, entertainment, self-improvement. Damien is using technology to push the limits of what humans can do. That's awesome. And then we have the veg, which sounds like it's all about plants, but it goes so much deeper than that. Yeah, it's like a total lifestyle change. They're talking about a whole community that's built on sustainability Mm -hmm. with like vegan products, affordable housing, Mm -hmm. and even their own digital currency Mm -hmm. powered by renewable energy. It's called a VEG token. A VEG powered economy. Now that's thinking big. I wonder if this could be like a blueprint for how we build sustainable communities in the future. It's definitely a really interesting model. It makes you think about local economies and how tech can be used to help people live sustainably. Okay, let's focus on this VEG token for a minute. I think it's supposed to be a digital currency that runs on solar energy. But then Damien brings up this idea of using some crazy advanced technology to like bombard platinum and mercury and make gold Hmm. as a way to get more resources. That's where things get a little unclear. It shows how ambitious Damien is and that he wants to find innovative solutions. But I'm not sure how realistic making gold that way is. And there could be a lot of problems with that. We definitely need to talk more about this. It's crazy how Damien mixes his real businesses with sci-fi. His novel Voyager. Mm -hmm. A time-traveling odyssey isn't just a story. It's like he's showing us what he thinks the future will be like. Oh, yeah. It's not just some random thing he's doing on the side. It seems like he's using the book to explore his ideas in a new way. Okay, so we have this guy, Jack Cross, just a normal realtor, who finds this ancient relic in Bali. Yeah, and that relic sends him straight to the future. He lands in 2167 Indonesia. Talk about a wild vacation. What's cool is that Jack's not a scientist or anything. He's just a normal guy, so it's easy to relate to him. Right, he's definitely out of his element. But he figures things out quickly. He's using all this futuristic tech, listening to new music. Makes you wonder what future music sounds like. Yeah, I'd love to hear what Damien thinks music will be like in 2167. But the book isn't all fun and games. 
Jack learns about these domed cities. They were built to protect people from, like, environmental disasters. It makes you realize that progress can have a downside. For sure, Damien is showing us both the good and the bad, the amazing things tech can do, and also what could happen if we're not careful. But then it gets even more interesting. Jack finds out that he has family in the future, a great-grandson named Rick, who works for a robotics company. That's where the idea of legacy comes in. It's not just about the tech we make, but also how our choices affect future generations. It reminds us that we're not just building the future for ourselves, we're building it for our kids and grandkids. Yeah, I like that. And then things take another turn. Someone steals data from Jack's android friend Neo, specifically footage of their travels. It's like Jack being in the future is messing things up and attracting bad attention. Uh-oh, that definitely raises the stakes. It makes it seem like there are bigger forces at play. Jack's not just a visitor anymore. He's involved in something much bigger. Yeah, it's getting intense. Next stop, the United States. But there's a problem. Jack's great-grandson's family is in quarantine because of this mutant genome scare. It's like Damien is talking about genetic modification and the good and bad things that could come from it. Mm. It reflects the ethical questions we're already facing. How far should we go with genetic engineering? Who benefits and who gets left behind? These are questions we need to think about as technology gets better. Definitely. And for Jack, it becomes personal. He's not just trying to learn about the future. He's trying to help his family. He ends up in this mutant sector outside the dome. It sounds like a mix of advanced tech and a kind of dangerous place. There are even these brutal cage fights between mutated humans. Oh, wow. That's dark. It reminds us that even in a future with amazing technology, there can still be inequality and suffering. It's a warning about using tech for good and making sure everyone benefits from progress. I agree. But Jack keeps searching for clues to help his family. And that's when he gets a new lead. An older woman in the Bahamas who might have the answers he's looking for. This woman, they call her the Oracle, lives in a secluded house. But she's not your typical fortune teller. Right, there are hints that she's connected to everything that's happening. Maybe she's even from another planet. Wait, from another planet? Okay, now things are getting really weird. Uh-huh. That's Damien for you. Always pushing the limits. <laughs> this meeting with the Oracle is a big turning point in the book. She tells Jack that his journey is connected to a powerful object. A key that can unlock his full potential. Sold on his full potential, so Jack's not just a realtor anymore. It seems like his time travel activated something special inside him. And the Oracle says that Jack has already seen this key. Remember that metal sphere we talked about earlier? The one under the Gununkawi temple? Oh yeah, it's all coming together. The temple, the time travel, the artifact, Jack's destiny. It's all connected. It is. Yeah. But there are problems. The men in black, the ones who stole the data from Nio, they come back. They want the oracle and the key. They know how important this is, and they want to control it. Classic battle between the people who want to keep knowledge and power for themselves and the people who want to share it to make the world better. Exactly. Jack, Nio, and the oracle manage to escape. And there's this exciting chase as they try to stay ahead. Damien's writing is really good here. It's full of action and keeps you on the edge of your seat. I bet. And they end up going straight to the heart of it all. The Pentagon. What a twist. It turns out the men in black are connected to the government. They're not just some random group. They're part of a system that wants to control the future. So they're inside the Pentagon, Jack Nio and the Oracle, and they're taken to this secret lab where scientists are studying that alien artifact. It's not just about Jack's journey anymore. It's about like the whole future of humanity. They've been trying to turn it on, but they can't. And then Jack shows up and everything changes. Yeah, they realize that Jack is the key, literally and figuratively. His connection to the artifact lets them unlock its true power. And that power creates a stargate. They actually make a portal to another world. Whoa, a stargate. Where does it go? What's on the other side? It goes to the Oracle's home planet, a world full of amazing life and super advanced technology. The Oracle tells them she was one of the first aliens to crash on Earth hundreds of years ago. Wow, that's crazy. So they go through the Stargate to this alien world. What's it like? It's like a paradise, but it still has its own problems. They meet strange creatures, see ancient ruins, and even run into this scary monster. Mm. But the Oracle takes care of it with some high-tech gadget. But there's a reason they're exploring. They're documenting everything, learning about the Oracle's people and their history. So it's like an adventure and a scientific expedition, but they're not alone, right? The government's watching them, no. wanting to use this new knowledge. Exactly. It makes you think about what could happen with alien contact and if the people in charge will do the right mm -hmm. thing. Hmm. That's a good point. So how's Jack doing with all of this? 
he's still trying to figure out what his role is. He has these new powers, and the future kind of depends on him. But he's not some superhero. He's just a normal guy trying to make good choices. Yeah. And that's what makes his story so interesting. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so they come back from the alien world, and Jack has changed. He doesn't want to just sell houses anymore. He wants to use what he's learned to make a difference. And the men in black see that. They offer him a chance to join their time travel program to become an agent of change. Imagine going from selling houses to traveling through time. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a big career change. So what does this new job involve? He goes on missions through time to stop disasters and change history for the better. Damien seems to be saying that time travel can be used for good, to fix mistakes and make a brighter future. That's a cool idea. But Jack learns that messing with the past can have unexpected results. Yeah, that's the classic problem. Having the power to change things, but also being responsible for what might happen. But Jack doesn't quit. He keeps learning because he wants to make a positive impact. In the end, he even uses his time travel powers to make sure his family is safe. It shows that the future isn't just about big events. It's about the people we care about. I like that. And finally, he goes back to his own time, forever changed by his experiences. He's not just Jack Cross the Realtor anymore. He's Jack Cross the Voyager, a man who has seen the future and wants to make it better. That's awesome. So what does all of this mean for us? Damien's vision for his companies and his book, it reminds us that we're all on a journey. And that journey can take us to places we never expected. He's encouraging us to embrace the unknown, to question what we think we know, and to believe that anything is possible. I agree. Damien's story shows how powerful it can be to combine imagination with a desire to make the world better. His ideas are ambitious, but they prove that we can do anything. If we dream big and work hard for a better future. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Damien's world. We hope you found it as interesting and thought-provoking as we did. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep believing in the power of the future. Remember, the future is waiting to be written. What story will you tell? Welcome to the Golden Experience Podcast, where we don't just talk, we turn every moment to go. The bar is slowly shining bright like a sun-filled day, where places are bold and ideas paved the way. This is the Golden Experience Podcast, a journey of truth where you hear real talk that kicks ass. Here, every word matters, we bring you unique insights, compelling content crafted with authenticity and vision. We are here for the story, the journey, the Golden Experience that makes us feel learned and connect. From wonder and wisdom to the thrill of surprise We're searching for answers beyond the third skies With every reaction, every spark, every glance We're lighting up the world, giving dreams a chance This is the golden experience We're starting Welcome to the journey 
Where the gold awaits Join us on the golden experience It's time to elevate Thank you.